Welcome, everyone. My name is Steve Stein, and we are here uh, for a special occasion. Um, it's the welcome and introductory session to a new program. I have the honor of being uh, producing and working on with uh, Susan, Susan Weed, and the title is Your Herbal Medicine Chest. And as I said, it's a welcome and introduction to the program. Welcome. Thanks, Susan. Great to, great to be here with you. Thank you, Steve. What a wonderful opportunity. I am so honored. You know, we live in times that seem very troubled to most of us. A lot of people feel kind of threatened and we're so used to going to doctors and drugstores to get our medicines. But what if those things just disappear? So here is my herbal medicine chest for you. We're going to be looking at how we can take care of ourselves. I'm a green witch. That means I work with green and I'll be sharing all kinds of green blessings with you in this course. You can also read any of my six books, starting with Wise Woman Herbal for the Childbearing Year, Healing Wise, Menopausal Years, New Menopausal Years, Breast Cancer Question Mark, Breast Health, Down There, and my latest book, abundantly well. So if you say, as I'm talking to you, huh, I wish that was written down. It is written down. And this is where you'll find it written down when you want it. Okie doke. What do we have for you next? I work with plants and I also work with mushrooms because I live in a beautiful forested area where there are lots of mushrooms. We're not going to be talking about mushrooms in our herbal medicine chest, but I wanted to let you know that I do indeed think that mushrooms are very important and I hope that you're starting to figure them out. You See, I live in a homestead, and so I get to learn lots of herbal medicine from the creatures that live around me, all different kinds of creatures that can help me figure out. I actually once wrote a book. It was never published. I wrote more for myself called What Goats Eat because I've lived with goats for many, many years. And I think that goats are superb herbalists. So we'll be sharing lots of information that the goats have given me as we talk as well. We're going to be using our senses. Now, that's a kind of odd statement, isn't it, Susan? Here you are. You're just a flat image on a screen. And the very essence of herbal medicine is using our senses. One of the most common things that I say to students is close your eyes. Don't look. Recognize the plants by smell. Recognize the plants by taste. So I want to remind you of that, even though we have chosen for these sessions to be on screen, you're going to have to get out there yourself into nature get your feet off get your shoes off and your feet on the earth so that you can actually experience and work with the plants themselves this is not intellectual so much as it is heartfelt and from a very deep part of yourself Mm -hmm. that's the part we're looking for. The part that knows how to interact with the plants already. I'm just going to remind you of that. And then it will become like child 
let's play for you. Oh, look, she has Daisy Fleabane and she's picking some Echinacea. Perhaps her mother has a headache or her dad has a fever. Even at this tender age, you can become an herbalist because it really and truly is child's play. So easy to do, so easy to understand before you know it. Before you know it, you'll have a collection of baskets for gathering herbs and shelves with all kinds of herbal remedies on them. Many of my students have told me that they had to ask for cabinets because they found that they were making so many different herbal remedies. Here's one day's work with an apprentice. The apprentice who was here from Germany last year was amazed at the end of her seven weeks here how many remedies she had made during her short visit. Here's just a few of the easy to make remedies that we're going to be talking about. Let's jump in here and get ourselves situated so that we can receive green blessings. I have championed the use of nourishing herbs. When I started studying herbal medicine, herbalists were very proud and very happy to use herbs that were extremely drug-like. In fact, they seemed to choose the most poisonous and the most dramatic of the herbs to use over and over again. I was told, well, drugs are made from herbs. And while that certainly was more true, when I started doing herbal medicine 65 years ago, um, it's still not my chosen way to work with herbs. I want to work with nourishing herbs because you can use nourishing herbs freely. You can use them every day. You can use them as your drink. You can use them as your food. You can use them with water. You can use them in vinegar. You can use them in honey. We're going to be <clears throat> talking very quickly about how we might put herbs in water, vinegar, honey, also oil and alcohol as we go along in this little welcoming introduction. Here are some nourishing herbs, ones that are in my life on almost a daily basis. Nettle, also known as stinging nettle. Comfrey leaf, oat straw. It gets a red underline because the spell checker doesn't like, but I make it one word. Red clover, hibiscus, linden, slippery elm, and astragalus. These are all herbs that have no strong sense. They don't have any volatile oils. Of course, each one has its own unique aroma, but they're not things like peppermint and lavender and lemon balm and eucalyptus that have very powerful scents. In fact, by their scents, we know they're not nourishing herbs. Here's a few examples of some of the nourishing herbs that I like to work with. And let's remember that nourishing herbs are the safest. The side effects are rare. They can be taken in any quantity for any period of time. Nourishing herbs are foods like leafy greens, garlic, and carrots. They provide high-level nutrients, including vitamins, minerals, trace minerals, starches, simple and complex sugars, bioflavonoids, carotenes, and essential fatty acids. And how did I leave out protein? The nourishing herbs are exceptional sources of protein. And here we go. One of everybody's favorite nourishing herbs, stinging nettle. I took this picture 
this morning, November 5th, in the Catskill Mountains. I don't live in a frost-free climate. We've already had several frosts, but the nettle is still very beautiful. And we would use it dried to make a nettle infusion. Where's our nettle infusion? There we go. You can see the nettle with the stalk and the leaves here is infusing. That's a full ounce of nettle per quart of water or two ounces of dried stinging nettle in each one of these half gallon jars. They'll be steeped for four to eight hours, getting lavish amounts of protein and minerals out of them. All right. Now, what to look at the different menstruums. We were talking about the nourishing herbs are very good in water or vinegar or honey. And they're the five menstruums that are used when we're making our herbal remedies. And you already know how to make a tea. And I just told you how to make an infusion, which is one ounce of dried herbs steeped for four to eight hours. And a soak, of course, is like a bath. Down here, I've given you the preparation if you want to use alcohol or oil or vinegar or honey. It's really easy. Harvest your fresh herb, cut it up. Fill your jar, any size. Add your menstruum, whichever one you choose. Screw on a lid, label it. It's ready to use in six weeks. So what I'm talking about a tincture, that's how we make it. Those bottles you saw, that's what was in those bottles. These very simple to make herbal remedies. So what else do we have that is a nourishing herb? One um, favorite is hibiscus tea. It's a wonderful nourishing herb, fantastic for the heart. And it's coming on strong as an anti-cancer herb as well. In my herbal medicine chest, we're not going to be using very many nourishing herbs because Nourishing herbs are kind of the thing that we do every single day. This is a beautiful nourishing herb called linden. It's the flowers of the linden. Those green parts aren't actually the leaf. They're actually part of the flowers themselves. And this is one of the world's greatest anti-inflammatories. For most people, it's 10 to 100 times more effective than turmeric and 10 to 100 times tastier to most people as well. Here's our linden infusion. You can see we did the same thing. We put in one ounce of dried linden per quart of water. These are half gallon jars. So there's two ounces of dried linden. That's the flower with the green part of the flower to half a gallon of water that steeps for four to eight hours, providing a brew that is tremendously healing to the cardiovascular system, enlightens your mood, and, oh my goodness, is really potent against coronaviruses. How useful to us. The primary nourishing herb that we will be talking about when we're looking at our herbal medicine chest is slippery elm balls. They are great for digestion. And I'll tell you lots of slippery elm stories because wow, do I ever have some slippery elm stories when we get to slippery elm. Now, let's look for a minute at some tonifying herbs. Nourishing herbs, as we've said, are in our daily drinks, in our daily food. They're things that we have as companions. Tonifying herbs are also daily companions. We want to 
use them regularly. And spell checker does not like the word tonifying. Spell checker has never liked the word tonifying. We've been arguing about this for over 20 years. Some of the tonifying herbs, and there are lots and lots and lots of tonifying herbs that we will be looking at here include old friends. Oh, yes. Tonifying herbs act slowly in the body. They have a cumulative rather than immediate effect. And they're most beneficial when they're used in small quantities for extended lengths of time. Side effects are slightly more common with tonics. And note that many herbalists equate stimulating herbs with tonics, leading to misuse and unwanted side effects. The more bitter the tonic tastes, the less you need to take of it. Glam tonics are kind of like nourishing herbs. So the tonics span the space in between the right out nourishing herbs and we what we might call the more medicinal herbs with their more bitter taste like everybody's friend dandelion. This is perhaps the most recognized plant in the world. This is why I say herbal medicine is people's medicine. Everyone is an herbalist. If you recognize dandelion, you're already an herbalist because any part of dandelion picked on any day of the year and prepared in any way, whether you use water, alcohol, vinegar, honey, oil, makes a great remedy. Dandelion has hundreds and hundreds of well proven uses. It's a tonic, and it can also be used in acute situations. Thank you, dandelion. We are so blessed by all of the wishes that you grant us. I couldn't help but include my goldenrod flower honey in our tonic section. We're not going to be talking about it in our herbal medicine chest, but Perhaps where you live, there's still a little goldenrod flowering and you can capture it and put it up in some honey. It is one of the best tonics as we go into the winter. I really love it in my teas. All right. A lot of the herbs in the herbal medicine chest are stimulating and sedating. Well, yeah, we want first aid. We don't want like nourishment that takes a while to come on. We don't want tonification that we have to use repeatedly. No, we want something to happen right away. Stimulants and sedatives. Now we're getting a lot more into the medicinal kinds of things. So we use stimulating and sedating herbs as needed. That's why they're in the medicine chest and not in the kitchen. Alcohol, water, honey, vinegar are the usual menstruums that are used when we're working with skullcap, motherwort, lemon balm, mince, lavender, cannabis, California poppy, philopendula, kava, yarrow, echinacea, green tea, and coffee. And you might say, oh my goodness, why is coffee there? Well, I'm not going to talk about it in our herbal medicine chest, but do know that both black tea and coffee contain enough caffeine to actually stop an asthma attack in its tracks. Pretty amazing what the plants can do for us. <clears throat> Stimulating and sedating herbs cause a wide variety of usually rapid reactions, some of which may be unwanted. Long-term use can lead to dependency, so sedating and stimulating herbs are best used in moderate doses for fairly short periods of time. Side effects are frequent. There may be loss of tone or a rebound manic effect when the herb <clears throat> is no longer taken, and some parts of the person may be stressed in order to help other parts of the person, whether it's an herbal sedative or stimulant or a drug one, the same problems apply. 
here's a wonderful picture of some thyme in my garden. And we have just made some thyme honey. We have harvested that thyme and set that aside. And that thyme honey is now part of our herbal medicine chest all winter long. I will have access to that to help ease any coughs or colds or flus. Here's the sage from my <clears throat> herb garden. And we also made some sage honey. Plants in the mint family, like rosemary and sage and thyme, contain those volatile oils that we don't want in our infusions, but we do want in our honey. I saw that there was just a big conference here in New York State seeing if we could finally get the legal cannabis for sale. Here is some homemade cannabis ghee in which the leaves, not the flowers, are simmered in butter and then the solids of the butter taken off. This ghee can then be used in cooking, but do remember that it is a sedative, so we don't want to be using it all of the time we will be talking in our herbal medicine chest about cannabis and good uses of it. We'll also be talking about California poppy. Here's a picture of the tincture of California poppy that I made this year. There's California poppy that's growing right out of a pot on my deck. Such a beautiful, beautiful plant. We'll be talking about the best ways to use California poppy and other pain-relieving herbs like philopendula. Philopendula ulmeria is a plant that contains so much pain-relieving compound that we often have to warn people if they use it in a salve, to be careful because they can actually injure themselves from not being able to feel sensation because of philopendula. We'll be talking a lot about that as well. And then some herbs that we probably won't talk about very much at all are the potentially poisonous ones. We're going to be using them very, very rarely, and they're almost always in alcohol. The primary one that we will talk about is wormwood. I don't use golden seal. I like celandine, but I use it very, very rarely. And kava leaf is quite dangerous. We're going to be talking about kava root. Wormwood, however, is a tremendous poison to take with you if you're traveling around in the world. I'll be telling you about how my parents used wormwood on their trip to India. Potential poisons and potent medicines, they activate intense effects on the part of the body and spirit. They have to be taken in tiny amounts for very short periods. Unexpected side effects are common and they're used without regard for their power. Increase your herbal knowledge and sense of security when contemplating the use of potentially poisonous herbs by consulting other references and experienced herbalists. You know, I wrote this quite a while ago, and since then, one of the things that I've been doing is having conferences kind of showing that most of the information out there on the um, internet about herbs is really hairy, scary, not um, accurate at all. And here's um, that, uh, what is this the tinctures that we generally find for sale are made from dried herbs. You'll notice that the recipe I gave you calls for using fresh herbs, that you pick the herb, chop it, fill a jar with it, pour the alcohol over it, and then let it sit for six weeks. These tinctures are generally made with dried herbs that are powdered, High proof alcohol is poured through the powdered herb, extracting the most poisonous parts of the plant. And those tinctures are ready almost instantly. So it's good for commercial use. I find 
that making our own tinctures gives us superior results when we're working with the plants. You noticed, however, that the nourishing herbal infusions do need dried herbs. Nettle was one of the nourishing herbal infusions that we saw. And here are some ways to buy a stinging nettle leaf here at Frontier Co-op, which is a workers co-op. You may also want to resource your nourishing herbs from Star West Botanicals. And here are some ways to get a nettle from Star West Botanicals. I just chose nettle because it's one of my favorite nourishing herbal infusions. And making sure that you had access to that. So that should give you a brief but pretty clear idea of what I'll be referring to. We're going to start with yarrow, self-defense. I'm going to be talking about yarrow tincture. Do you know what a yarrow tincture is? Yes, you do. It's made by harvesting fresh yarrow, chopping it up, pouring 100 proof vodka over it, letting it sit for six weeks. Same thing with skullcap, philopendula, cannabis, California poppy, and kava, hypericum, wormwood, and echinacea. We are going to make tinctures of each one of those. Can you buy the tinctures? You can. And as we move into my herbal medicine chest, I'll also be sharing with you some places that I think make really good tinctures because they're using fresh plant material and not dried plant material. Dandelion, plantain, and slippery elm are plants that we're not going to make tinctures of. Your herbal medicine chest contains a lot of tinctures because tinctures are the easiest form of herbs to carry around with us. Unfortunately, they don't extract any of the nutritive qualities from the herbs. So this has been a fun time together. If you are totally new to herbal medicine, and there are so many people who are interested in note, really next to nothing. I hope that this has been an easy and brief introduction so that as we move into looking at individual plants and how to use them, you'll feel confident and like you can hum along with spirit of the plants has come to me in the form of a beautiful dancing green woman. Green blessings, everybody. All right. That was that was great, Susan. <laughs> well, I'm sorry that uh, Zoom didn't want to accept more than a set number of images, gonna, but fun gonna... nonetheless. Mm -hmm.